So let's talk about this required practical about decay. So uh, let's start from the basics. So uh, there are organic molecules in the world, like the ones that make up this apple. They tend to be, on a whole, sort of larger, more insoluble molecules. I'm thinking of like the cellulose that makes uh, up most of plants, like this apple. And they need to be decayed into small soluble molecules so that they can get taken up by plants and the whole uh, thing can go round again. So this required practical then. What it is, is it's like, um, you see this, this compost heap. When, when gardeners make a compost heap, they need to consider uh, different things for, for maximum uh, like rotting speed. They need to consider temperature. They need to consider moisture and they need to consider oxygen. You see, and they need to balance these for like the, the maximum speed to decompose down this uh, this dead plant material and turn it into something useful that they can put on their gardens. Um, now that's important for lots of different reasons. Like this, for example, this is a uh, biogas digester. And basically what you do is if you own a farm, you stick your your animal feces in there. So that's basically your waste. And it gets digested anaerobically. That's the one without oxygen, anaerobically. And then what you get out is you get uh, biogas, basically methane. And then you can burn that as a fuel. Now, the reason I bring that up is because um, for the most part, compost heaps are aerobic, or at least good compost heaps are aerobic processes, and the oxygen in this case helps to make it go faster. Now, obviously, for you doing an experiment in a lab, uh, it's not going to be very feasible for you to control oxygen levels going to uh, something that you're going to decay. So the one that you are going to change is going to be temperature, because that's much easier for you to do. So what is it that you're going to decay? Well, you are going to take some milk. And well, I was about to say you're going to let it decay, but there's there's really two ways of doing this. There's the fake way. There's fake method. And then there's the real way of doing this, the real method of doing this. So let me talk you through the, the fake way first. Now, this is for... Uh, when you are very short on time. So what you do is you've got your milk and you put it in test tubes. Now, these obviously need to be very clearly labeled because um, obviously with a whole room full of people doing this and like five or six test tubes each and they're all going into going to go into water baths in a minute, you need to clearly label, you know, what's in them, what temperature it is, you know, uh, who, who did it, that kind of thing. But then what you do is to each of these, you add a chemical called sodium carbonate. And what that does is it makes them uh, alkaline. So, so remember I said this is the fake way. This isn't going to be anything to do with them rotting. This is a, a simulation of them rotting. This is, this is why I don't like it. You then add this stuff here which, oh goodness, I hope I can spell this right. Here we go. Phenol phthalene. Uh, nope, okay, try again. Phenol phthalene, I hate that word. Anyway, it's an indicator and it is pink in an alkali, colorless, in acid. So you've added some phenolphthalein in here and unsurprisingly it has gone pink which is just what you'd expect it to do because of the sodium carbonate that you added to, to it. You then add an enzyme called lipase and that gets added in as well. Now what the enzyme lipase is going to do, well, in the milk, you've got your fats. Yeah. And what the lipase is going to do is it is going to digest them 
Where's that red? There we go. Ly, lipase. It's going to digest them into fatty acids and glycerol. Okay. Now, you're probably focusing on that word there, acids, yeah. So as the lipase works, it is going to digest the fats into fatty acids and the uh, the milk solution. It's gonna get steadily more and more acidic until it goes colorless. So then what you do is you get all your tubes that contain your phenolphthalein and your, uh, and your lipase and you stick them into a water bath at a variety of temperatures. So you're gonna want, I don't know, 30, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, oh, some, something like that. Uh, one more, 20 degrees, there we go. Something like that. And then what you're gonna see is you're gonna monitor how long until it turns colorless. Okay, so that's really the name of the game. So it says how long until solution is colorless. So how long does it take the lipase to produce enough fatty acids to push the milk with the alkaline stuff in from being alkaline to being an acid? That is really the name of the game here. So you will then probably draw a graph and it will look something like this. So let me add some numbers to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And your graph will probably do a line something like that. Okay, let me let me talk you through the why. So, why here? Well, at this point, the enzyme is working. Now, remember back to um, when uh, you did about enzymes. Enzymes work. They have particular temperatures that they work well at. And that's the optimum temperature. So this is the optimum temperature for our lipase enzyme. Okay, it is working very, very hard. It is um, splitting apart that those fats into fatty acid and glycerol, and it is decolorizing the solution very quickly. Why then does it suddenly spike up like that? Why is it? basically taking longer and longer and longer and longer and longer to happen when it gets hot. Well, that is because the enzyme is denaturing. You're denaturing, uh, denaturing the enzyme and it is taking longer and longer and longer. So just to go back to this for a second, the reason why the lipase takes so long at high temperatures is because you've basically broken it. You've, you've denatured it. It prefers working at a particular temperature. Just going back to our real world links, that means that basically if you want your compost heap to do well, you've got to keep it warm, but not too warm. Warm so that the enzymes will work quickly. And if you need a bit of a recap on that, go watch the enzymes video, but not so hot that the enzymes denature. Same thing with the biogas digester. You want it warm, but not too warm. So that's the, the fake way of doing it. Why is it fake? Because it has absolutely nothing to do with decay. You might think I sound a little bit bitter because there is a there is a real there's a real way of doing this, and in this real way, it involves basically sitting around for a week and waiting for it to decay naturally. So this is the this is the real scientist's way. This is the real method. So what you do is you uh, you leave it and you uh, you sample the pH every day. Uh, over over let's say a week over a week so you have to pop in at your lunch times every day for a week and monitor the pH of your samples and again you would have some water baths set up lots of water baths set up at a variety of temperatures and you would see um, what happens to the pH over time a little bit different uh, uh, going on in this one what's happening is that there are bacteria in milk remember this is the real rotting experiment and they are taking the lactose sugar and they're digesting it into lactic acid. And if you really care, the bacteria are called lactobacillus. Oops, hang on. Lactobacillus, there you go. Perfect. And then um, you would draw a graph. Now this one's a little, little bit more involved. Your 
uh, pH would start, I think P, uh, milk is a slightly on the acidic side, at about 6.5. And then for your various um, temperatures of milk that you've held it at, it will go at uh, different rates. So your one at uh, 30, let's say, you'll see a quick drop in pH and then it will level off like so, whoops. And then, so that's gonna be like your, uh, your, like your 30 degree line. And then just going to the other extreme, your, um, your like your 50 degree line will be a lot slower like that. So I think that raises two questions. First of all, why is it leveling off here and here? Well, there comes a point when the um, pH kills the bacteria. Notice the 50 degree one hasn't quite got down to that level just yet. It's got some way to go. Why is the 50 degree one taking such a long time? Why is the rate of decrease so slow? And again, the uh, the bacteria are struggling because the uh, p uh, the temperature is too high. So the temperature causes enzymes to denature. You see, so it's going a lot more slow. Uh, the the basically the lactobacillus is struggling to uh, decay the milk at those higher temperatures. Now you might be thinking, whoa, hang on a second, you said this one would take a week, and essentially we've come to the same conclusion that temperature makes the, uh, high temperatures makes things rot really slowly because enzymes are denaturing. Didn't we just discover that really super quickly with this experiment? And yes, I guess it did, but it's still not the real method. You still haven't really decayed anything. This one is still better. So, message to finish them. Warm things rot faster, hot things rot slowly. Why? Enzymes denaturing. Thank you.